Thank you. Yeah, I've been singing the whole day, so now you finally get to hear me speak as well. <laughs> I have a voice that can speak too, not the singing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, very nice to be here. Um, one more keynote to go, and then we can finally go for cocktails. Um, I am hope you all look forward to it as much as I do. Um, and I want to talk to you about a topic I'm very passionate about, which is um, the human side of data, specifically humanizing data strategy. The reason why I want to talk about it, and why I wrote a whole book about it, actually, is that in my uh, 11 years of working in data, I realized that most of the data issues can be traced back to human reasons, right? Either it's like disagreement, uh, wrong decision based on a lack of information, um, lack of collaboration. A lot of things are coming back always to the human aspect of data. And despite everyone agreeing in the industry that it's one of the most important aspects of data, there doesn't seem to be a lot of practical literature around it, right? It's one of those topics that if you compare it to technical literature, is like by far less than actually anything else. So I want to talk to you a little bit about why I think the human side of data is important and a little bit of an actionable framework. Um, I promise I'm not starting with music, but I might end with music. Um, but there's no live music anymore. You're just going to enjoy something else. Cool. So quickly by myself, I'm working as a data strategy and data governance lead at ThoughtWorks Europe. Um, I'm also the head of marketing of Dharma Germany, which is the German chapter of Dharma International, an organization that focuses on data management professionals. I spoke at TEDx talk about uh, AI and the human values that are driving it last year. I wrote a book called Humanizing Data Strategy. I apply my musical talents to data, as you have noticed, across the whole day, I believe. And personally about myself, I'm born and raised in Germany, but with parents from China. The reason why I'm saying this is because we're all shaped by our own unique experiences and our upbringing, right? I myself, uh, having been born in the 80s in Germany, um, I was treated as an outsider a lot, right? Um, either I was treated out as an outsider in Germany because I looked different, or in China because I behaved and spoke differently. But being treated always as a different person actually motivated me to be more inclusive, right? Bringing people together, not wanting to fear everyone else to be excluded. And that is something that is shaping my view on data collaboration as well and how to work in data. And um, ironically, when um, in my career, I worked, um, I would say 50-50, 50, 50, 50 in data analytics and data science, and then 50 in data management and data governance. When I worked in data analytics and in data science, um, I was very popular among the business stakeholders, right? Everyone wanted to talk to me. They're like, bring insights to us. Tell us what we can do better. Let us be data-driven. Um, and that was very nice of them. And then I switched to data governance, and it was radio silence. Nobody even reacted to me anymore. Meeting invites were rejected without any reasons. Nobody reacted to my use messages. It was um, jarring, I would say. And I realized that, again, uh, being all, all of a sudden felt a little bit excluded, meant I had to bring my motivation back and see how it's going. And if we think about it, it's really biased in this world, right? So when I say data governance, I might mean value, data quality, risk prevention. And from other stakeholders, they might immediately think about the data police, micromanagement, creating roadblocks, and all these kind of things. And of course, that needs clarification. But to be able to clarify that, we need to pay more attention to each other and then actually focus on the human aspect more and empathize with each other as well a bit more. And if we look at the data space right now, right, uh, data is more popular than ever, and for better or worse, right? We have higher speed and more complexity because business models are changing. Digitalization is driving a lot of the business processes to be changing all the time nowadays. Uh, we invested a lot into data literacy and data democratization, and that meant that a lot of people know, know now how to deal with data, and they use a lot more data, but with the consequence that we might not know what data is used for what, and that creates a lot of risks and complexity. Um, we have a lot of regulations as well and laws that are happening, especially in Europe, right, like the Data Act and the AI Act, et cetera, et cetera, that are creating a lot of requirements towards our data. And lastly, also, of course, we heard a lot about AI today already, but new technologies and industry trends are driving demand towards data too. And what that leads to is that we need to have a data strategy that maximizes the value of data while minimizing the risks. People, process, and technology need to all work together to actually make it work. So what actually is a data strategy? For data strategy being such an important thing in the world, uh, there seems to be not actually one agreement on what a data strategy actually is and how it's defined. So I came up basically with the best of and made my own definition out of it, which I define as follows. 
A data strategy is a long-term plan that defines the people, process, and technologies to create, process, and use data to intentionally drive value in a meaningful, secure, and transparent way. The reason why I like this definition is because it implies three things. One is that it's about the entire data lifecycle. So it actually goes from data being produced somewhere, being processed uh, somewhere in the middle, and then being finally used. So it's not just about how to use the data, but along the whole data lifecycle, right? Including all data stakeholders. It's also about being value-driven, right? Not just doing what is exciting, but doing something that is actually bringing value to your organization. And that means it needs to have a strong alignment with your business goals. And lastly, that human perception is involved, right? So for example, if I think something is meaningful, you might not think is meaningful. Same with secure or transparent. And we do all actually agree on it based on certain rules that we create on what it actually is. So human agreements are needed. So if you look at all this, right, the human aspect and the human perception part of it all is very important because human beings need to take accountability, they need to communicate clearly, and they need to have shared goals to actually make it work. And this is why I lead basically to uh, this framework um, of the five Cs, I call it, to actually uh, bring the people aspect of data closer again to data teams. Um, the first one is competence. So competence really is moving beyond just data literacy. I know we all invested a lot in it, and uh, we all try to make business stakeholders be really data savvy nowadays. But it also feels a little bit one-sided, right? We basically said all of you business people need to learn how to speak data now so you can talk to us, otherwise we cannot work with you. But isn't it fair only that we also get to learn about the business side of things, right? We should learn about business acumen and speak their language too and take one step to each other, right? And another thing about the competence aspect is that um, leading is not the same as doing, right? And a lot about data leadership is also being a good stakeholder manager, being a good communicator. And all this is not really natural to data professionals nowadays. So investing into actual leadership skills is also very important in the, in the data space. And lastly, also, it's about having the right, let's say, career path in the organization, right? If you want to actually build up a talent pipeline and have the right people behave in a certain way and learn things, then allow them to apply their talents and then newly learn skills to also then grow and have a career path in front of them and not kind of block um, experts in their uh, practitioners' roles and leaders only being leaders, for example. The next one is collaboration. So that one is about inter- and cross-functional collaboration, right? And it's about transparency, accountability, and shared goals. And one really key theme for me about collaboration is uh, the topic of service versus self-service, right? Um, service meaning the more centralized aspect of a data team doing all of the work for the rest of the organization, and self-service basically having a platform with self-service capabilities, and then all of the uh, basically decentralized teams doing their own thing with it. And no matter how you spin it, there's always going to be a mismatch of expectations, right? Because in service, there's always going to be too slow or there's always going to be a bottleneck of the central data team because the business wants more than the data team can actually handle, right? You, you can only grow reactively, basically. And in self-service, the self-service capabilities will never be enough either, right? So it's always going to be the users wanting more from self-service and not being able to do enough with it. So how do we deal with it? And the goal, I think, is not actually in changing these operating models. The goal is to change the mindset. And that means actually co-creation, right? Co-creation meaning we move away from this transactional thinking that I do something for you, you do something for me, but more about we create together something with a shared goal and with clear contribution to that shared goal to actually do it together. And we have clear accountability to what we contribute. And when it works, then we actually share the credit and the acknowledgement of that it has worked. And that is a key theme in collaboration and all that should lead to trust and then also having a better data culture. Communication really is about having more audience-specific narrative structures and undeniable business value paired with personal rewards and continuous impulses. The reason why I'm saying this in communication is because um, a lot about data is right, right now currently focusing on ROI, right? What is the return on investment of data? And focusing on business metrics is really good and important, but it's, I think, not enough, right? Because it's rationally telling people that what they should focus on, and that is important, but it might not emotionally actually motivate people to do the right thing still based on their intrinsic motivations. And a lot of it is, for example, that if you talk about higher profitability by saving costs, then that might mean it's about higher productivity, 
But what people really care about is this one sales team that doesn't have to clean the data once per week anymore and having finally the space of not having to do that manually anymore to focus on more important topics, right? Basically using the business narrative as the common ground and then using more personal empathetic narratives to specific stakeholder groups can help you also convince them and ideally make them part of your journey more than just rationally addressing them. Creativity is really about, um, for me, the source of innovation, right? Because every innovation starts with a good idea first, right? So it's all rooted in human creativity. And by that, I basically mean that when we think about creativity, there are two sides. One is spontaneous creativity, and there's also solution-driven creativity. And we need to focus um, more on the solution-driven creativity that leads us to be better in spontaneous creativity too, right? Basically, how do we solve problems in better ways and in different ways and not just accepting the status quo and keep us being creative and creating the right environment about it as well. And then lastly, also it's about conscience, right? This is all about applying our critical thinking and our human judgment in the right ways. If we look into the current trend of doing much more with AI nowadays, right, um, it's getting less and less transparent about how AI is doing things, and we need to ensure that it's interpretable and it's also explainable, right? But at the same time, it's impossible for a, a small data team to think of all of the possible consequences of something going wrong, and you need more cross-functional expertise to do that, right? So, for example, the legal teams, the infosec teams, um, the DEI teams, the human resource teams, the ethics teams in the organization, all those probably have a say in this too, and they have a point of view. And only by bringing these expertise together actually can create more of a holistic view on what the risks are and applying human judgment in a more holistic way. All right. And before we jump to the end, just some closing words. Um, technology should support and not replace humanity, right? If we think about it, human beings are great, but we all make mistakes and we all have flaws. So let's imagine and try not to have a technology amplify our flaws too and only the good sides. And that means we should use it as a tool and not as replacing human beings completely. Working in data is not only existing, but it comes with responsibility too, right? Um, as in Spider-Man, it was said, right? With great power comes great responsibility. Let's take that seriously as well. And finally, data should be taken seriously, but we can still have fun while working at it like playing piano and seeing a life about uh, speakers at a conference. The future of data lies in all of our human hands, and good luck to everyone. <laughs>
is right and I know that you agree Commitments like a contract we sign with our hearts Clear as the lines of love from the very start When we have any issues we always have a talk We mediate the root cause we hate work